Stump over center. Horton is in motion. Give to the pullback. That's Gurley. He creases the 10-yard line and is repulsed there by Floyd Terrell. Boy, it is a game of bounces, isn't it? <laughs> it's hard to believe. I can just see the, you know, the momentum has swung back and forth all day long. You know, we had the emotional start with uh, TCU. Jackie Sherrill saying it's no big thing. We still have to play them. TCU playing so well. Then A&M coming back with a great offense and their great defensive play. What an emotional game. Now the Aggies into the eye. Darren Lewis put in the backfield by Philando Newton. It was Newton who missed Darren Lewis. That allowed Lewis that 80-yard touchdown romp less than two minutes ago. Clock running, 6.46 remaining in the game. The Aggies by seven. Far cry from last year's game, huh? <laughs> 74 to 10 Aggies at College Station. And the year before that wasn't much better. Here in Fort Worth, 53 to six Aggies. Stump under pressure, he unloads. It is incomplete. Pass intended for Harris, John Booty. Very slow getting up. And Phil Stump took a shot that time. It's unbelievable. Watch Philanda Newton on the outside. He clears by Cheek. Now look right here. Stump sees him. He's got to get rid of the ball quick. And there's the shot. And you can see Stump getting driven to the ground. He never sees the results of that. That young man has taken some tremendous shots today and come back up. Scott Slater with Stump holding. From 30 yards out. Boy, Slater, four for four on the afternoon. What a day for the junior from Richland High School right here in Fort Worth. Well, the Horned Frogs find themselves down by 10 now with 6-11 remaining in the ball game. Okay, let's get moving. First, we'll need work from every department. Who's set up for that? Our computers are tied in. Mike, how long for graphics? Two, three days max. Our computer can do it in a day. It's yours. Joni, typesetting and printing? About a week on overtime. Now, hold on now. Who published this? We did, on the computer. Well, do it again. Last, we need presentation overheads. Any ideas? We met in pre-dental and uh, opened our practice 15 years ago. Best buddies, usually. Usually, it, things work out. It, it could be worse. I'll tell you one thing, there aren't many guys I could work with. Yeah, neither can I. So right now, our primary concern is making sure the practice continues in case one of us, uh, you know, bites the dust. <laughs> bites the dust? Well, you know what that means. Jefferson Pilot Insurance and Financial Services. Jackie Sherrill. Squatting down, looking up at the scoreboard, and he sees his Aggies on top of the Horned Frogs, 34 to 24. And he knows that Thanksgiving Day at home, College Station will be the place where his Aggies will take on David McWilliams' Longhorns from the University of Texas. Reggie Davis and Jared Delaney are at the 25-yard line awaiting Lane Talbot's kick. Again, it's a squibber. That's Delaney. Across the 37, out near the 38. Lafayette Turner on the tackle. Dave, I want to remind all of our viewers at the end of today's game, you and I will be selecting the Coors Player of the Game. Well, I've got some candidates for that game already. But right now, if you're a TCU fan, TCU has got to drive the ball down and score on this drive. They've got to get either three or seven on this drive so that they'll get another opportunity to, to capture that, that moment to get back down again. They've got to have two scoring opportunities. Lasco chased out of the pocket. He will not turn the corner. John Roper drags him down. Dave, we have talked about John Roper throughout this ballgame. He entered today's game with 13 sacks, and that is very impressive when you consider he plays 
on the left side, and most quarterbacks are right-handed, so they can see him coming. But watch the speed he has. That's what makes him so good. They say he can leap onto a 54-inch table standing flat-footed to get up on top of it. That is unbelievable. I know that's not vertical leap, but that's getting up in the air. Vasco, there's the shuffle pass. Here comes Robbie Davis. Bobby across the midfield, strike to the 47-yard line. Alex Morris and Dana Batiste. A gain of 16, and Rasco was about a split second away from picking AstroTurf out of his teeth. Yeah, he certainly was. Watch this. This is, again, that shuffle pass. They have lived with this thing today. Underhand handoff. You can see there's Darthur going downfield, and Davis picks up a nice block there, picks up good yardage. That's what TCU has to do. They have to score on this drive. They've got to get close to get at least three. That's Davis again, and he is spun down from behind by the man I spoke of a moment ago, John Roper. Junior out of Houston, Texas, coming into this ball game. Roper with 81 tackles. I'll tell you, Dave, he is a serious candidate for Southwest Conference Defensive Player of the Year. Oh, he certainly is. They say he leg presses 800 pounds. No. That's what gives him the strength. Look at this play. Now there's the ball. It's thrown downfield. Look what he does. Turns around, gets right back into the play. I'll tell you one thing, he is a bona fide number one choice when he gets that opportunity. Rasco, pass right over the middle, it's intercepted by the Aggies, Gary Jones! Four yard interception return for Gary Jones. And Phil, that was a terribly dangerous pass. Now there they went for the two points on the play. They faked it, went there for two points and scored. They lined up like they were going to kick the field goal. They left their line way over on the other side of the field. And instead of what they do is they huddle and then they run across. But there is a flag down, but I think it's going to be against TCU. Yes, it is. But that's a trick play. You line up all the way across the field. Then what you do is you, just when you say set, you run the ball, you run your team all the way over, line up for the extra point. But they didn't do it. They snapped the ball over there. Now this is a big play. Watch this right here. It's a dangerous pass. It's an over the center screen. And you can see, he just gets his hand. Look how many people are around the ball. The ball was not thrown with good velocity. And you can see what the results of that are. Seven points. Second pass in this game, tipped by Ricky Stone. Both have been picked off by Aggies. Weekends, the days off, no one will work no more. This is the life, these are the real things. You're a part of it every day, every way. Cold is a part of your life. When cold, cold is a part of your life. You can't beat the feeling. What a trip to Honolulu's Hula Bowl and stay at the beautiful Alamoana Hotel. Enter the Coca-Cola Southwest Conference Superfan Sweepstakes at your neighborhood Kroger store or participating supermarket. Four fifty-three remaining in the ball game. That's the situation. A&M by two touchdowns over the Horned Frogs. But recall just a couple of weeks ago in Lubbock against Texas Tech, the Horned Frogs were down by two touchdowns, and they came roaring back. And in the span of two minutes, put two quick touchdowns on the scoreboard. But I'll say this, they weren't going against the Texas A&M defense, which has really capitalized. The score is not indicative of how this football game has been played. It's been an exciting football game. Lane Talbot will kick it away, and again he squibs it. That's Reggie Davis to the 21-yard line, and he's carried out of bounds there. Flags are down. It'll be unsportsmanlike conduct, I believe, against the Yankees. They were still pushing and shoving Reggie Davis eight or nine yards out of bounds. And that is the call. Uh, you'll watch this on the end here now. The whistle blows right in here. There's the whistle. See the hands? And they just give him a little shove for extra measure. And there was no harm in that. It's just kind of a, hey, you know, we are good. And uh, 
Uh, of course, you don't want to drive him into the wall, but uh, you just want to give him a little push for extra measure to let him know you're there. <laughs> so instead of the ball being at the 21, the Horn Frogs will start from their own 36. Third period score at Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas over the Bears, 21-3. Notre Dame over Penn State 21 to 20. Lou Holtz went for a two point conversion with two, 20 seconds to play and missed. And there's that final Ohio State. They won that game. That's Darthard. Bill, let's take a look at some more scores. How about that? Indiana 35 to 14 over Purdue in the fourth quarter. And there's Tennessee losing now to Kentucky 20 to 17 in the fourth quarter. Iowa over Minnesota in the third period. The Hawkeyes on top 24 to seven. Oklahoma State leading Iowa State 27-14 in the second quarter. Glasgow. He's got room to run it on a lot of room. And he'll take it out of bounds at the 50-yard line. And Phil, there was one play that really changed the momentum of this game, and it's this play right here. When they didn't field that ball, if you just fall on it right there, just fall down on it. Don't try to pick it up and run. Just fall down. And that really changed the momentum of this football game. That resulted in seven points. Then immediately they had that interception resulted in another seven points. And TCU has got a lot of long way to fight being down 42-24. But they have played a much better football game than that. Intended for Reggie Davis, and if he pulls that one in, it is a race to the end zone against Kip Corrington. And he has got to catch that pass. That pass is a very catchable ball. It's thrown over the center. He's got one hand out there, I know, but it's a catchable football. Those are the kind that you just have to come up with when your team is down. Well, it has been a tough, tough day for tight end Ricky Stone. He has tipped three balls, one in the air that could have been intercepted by the Aggies, two that he tipped were picked off. Rasco, there's the shovel pass. Tony Darkett fumbles it, it is still rolling free. Kick Corrington's got it, and the Aggies have the football again. Unbelievable play. This is again that shuffle pass where you throw underneath the Darthard. There's the pass. Now he's got the ball. Now watch this. He just kind of just drops it. And you want to see a motion? You don't think Jackie Sherrill's in it? Look at Jackie Sherrill. Going that way, guys. He almost lost his watch. <laughs> Maybe he was going to give it to the official. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think they got a big clock in the end zone. They don't need a watch. <laughs> but his team really has played well. Uh, and Jackie Sherrill, Jackie Sherrill has played, his team has played very, very well. They've capitalized on mistakes. And great teams cause mistakes. Oh, the Aggie defensive unit has caused some terrific headaches for the Horned Frogs today. So did Craig Stump. He is now out of the ball game. And it is Bucky Richardson who has gone in. Richardson, the... High school freshman out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Well, I can tell you, I can't say enough about Craig Stump, Dave. The afternoon he had, he had Horn Frog defenders in his face all day long. And you see the ice on his knee and ice on his hand. <laughs> he's got ice all over him. He has really taken some shots, but he's got a big grin. As well he should. His Aggies lead at 42-24, 4-0-4 remaining in the ball game. That's Darren Lewis caught in the backfield by Paul Llewellyn. And right now, if you're a Texas A&M fan, you just want to run that clock down. It's down to 345. It's ticking down. Just keep the ball on the ground. Don't fumble. Don't give them any life. And just take this one home and be happy for it. Tight end Brian Ross moving over to the top of your screen. Out of the eye formation. Again, here come the Aggies. That's Lewis. He is hit behind the line of scrimmage. Fumbles the ball. And David Spradlin has got it for TCU. Spradlin makes the hit. Pops the ball loose. And smothers it. Well, there's no one more surprised on this play than Lewis. He's on the sideline. He was just shocked. Spradlin just takes the ball and just rips it out of his hands. Watch Spradlin. 55. He's going to come in there. Look, just rips the ball out. Look at Lewis. He just turns around. Hey, where's the ball? <laughs> and down he goes. And he's down on the field still. 
He just did not expect that. Spradlin just got in there, just ripped the ball out. But Oh, what an afternoon for the freshman out of Carter High School in Dallas. 15 carries for Darren Lewis, 195 yards, and a pair of touchdowns. Well, he had over 200 yards at one time, but he's lost a few yards on the last two carries. But one time he had 201 yards and lost about six, so he's down to 195. That's really being down, isn't it, Phil? <laughs> Rasco, there's the quick hitter out to Reggie Davis. He coughs up the football. Well, that was a good cough up of your TCU fan because he fumbled it downfield and picked up about six yards on the fumble. But they have just they have just been swamped by fumbles today. I cannot believe the number of fumbles. Now they haven't lost them all, but it has been unbelievable. They've like, they've had five fumbles, I believe. Now a total of eight turnovers in this ball game. Pass in and out of the hands of Wayne Waddy. Boy, for the Aggies, talk about turnovers. Three interceptions and two fumbles. It's been a turnover day, and you know, you, you would think that there's a rainstorm if someone was out there listening to this game and didn't know you'd say well the ball was wet something was wrong but it's been a perfect day for football Rasco's pass picked off still being batted around boy it was punched up in the air hit in the air again <laughs> looked like a beach volleyball game watch this ball this is amazing the ball is tipped right behind the line of scrimmage there's the first tip right watch this right there's the first tip off the helmet watch here comes number two tip there's number two, number three. And the ball bounces free on the sideline. Corrington had the first tip for the Aggies, and it appeared as if Jared Delaney might come down with it, but he tipped it back in the air, and Reggie Davis had a shot at it, but couldn't come up with it. Rasco deep drop, flag is down, right over center, and it's caught, touchdown, Bobby Davis. A flag is down at the 22-yard line on the far side. And that's something that happened along the line of scrimmage. Probably, it's, oh, I think it's going to go against TCU for illegal motion. Someone moved along the line of scrimmage. Oh, man. Here comes the signal, and that is illegal motion along the line of scrimmage. The line judge all the way on the far side of the field threw that flag, so he's the one that made that call. Nebraska out in front of Oklahoma. First period score. And Lincoln and UCLA is leading the Trojans of USC. 7th nothing. first quarter score from Los Angeles. Rasco on third down. And he'll be dropped by Roper. Roper with his 14th sack of the year. Well, it looked like there was a hole there. And it looked as if Rasco would step up because the coverage had gone deep. But how quickly John Roper reacts to the ball and gets back in there and makes the tackle. Let's go on fourth and a bunch. In and out of the hands of Delaney. Boy, that would have been way, way short of a first down. And the ball will go over to Texas A&M. We want to thank our stats man, Donald McDivitt, our spotters for A&M, Tom Ellis. And for the Horn Frogs of TCU, Charlie Durker, who incidentally picked up the tab last night at dinner. Did he pay for that dinner? Wow. I think that so. was all right. <laughs> Charlie, you can spot for me anywhere, partner. <laughs> anywhere you'll pick up the tab for dinner. <laughs> 2.14 left to go in the ball game here at Eamon Carter Stadium in Fort Worth, Texas. That is Horton. Well, Phil, we, gotta, we have to pick a player of the game, you know that. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to argue a little bit. There's a lot of candidates. I think Stump has played well, but I think it's got to be Darren Lewis, don't you? Yeah, we're pleased to announce, Dave, that our Coors player of the game is, in fact, the freshman out of Carter High School here in Dallas, Darren Lewis from Texas A&M. Well, how about I give an honorable mention to uh, Ron Harris? 
he had five catches for 119 yards. Or Craig Stump, you know, the, the talented quarterback. That is Larry Horton, another freshman out of Tatum, Texas. We can't give a first and second prizes, can we? Honorable mentions. But I'll tell you, if you're going to give honorable mentions out, you've got to cross the field in purple, number 31, Tony Darthard. What oh, yeah. an afternoon. Today's game has been brought to you by Coors. By the Jefferson Pilot Companies. By Conoco. By Rockwell. And by Coke and your Coca-Cola bottlers. Fourth period, a minute 33 remaining. Phil Stone with Dave Rowe. And it is A&M over TCU, 42 to 24. The Longhorns comfortably out in front of the Baylor Bears this afternoon at Memorial Stadium in Austin. And that sets up quite a show next Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, at College Station. The Longhorns and the Aggies. And Bucky Richardson. A gain of three. Kent Trammell on the tackle. Now, Dave, Jim Wack with everything they faced less than 24 hours ago. The loss of Tony Jeffrey. What a show the Horn, Frag, Horn Frogs put on. Well, they really did. And I'll tell you, you know, in defense of Jeffrey, if there is any defense, I'm sorry that it happened. I really am. I, I'm glad that when I was a college athlete, I didn't face the same decision that he had to make. He made the wrong decision. I'll be honest with you. It was the wrong decision. He's a very upset individual right now. He's got a, he brought a lot of disgrace to himself, his teammates. He let a lot of people down. But I will say this. It's the same situation. Something should and must be done about these agents who lure people into signing contracts. And it's just, it's a terrible thing. You wave some dollars in front of their faces. And these young, these young athletes, they just make a wrong decision and it affects the entire team. That's Melvin Collins, the first time Collins has carried the ball today. And we have reached the one minute mark, one minute remaining in this ball game. Well, for Jim Wacker, it'll be a, a long winter, an interesting spring as he welcomes uh, a couple of big, big freshman defensive tackles who redshirted a couple of guys who go 6'6", 285 pounds. It is already a defensive unit that is rich in talent. He'll lose Dave Spradlin. He'll also lose Kent Trammell. Floyd Terrible will be going to graduation, as will Tommy Sharp. Boy, you look on offense. It is a very young Horn Frog offense. Most everybody will return next year. As I said in the second period for Jackie Sherrill and Texas A&M, their situation calls for more immediate attention as they looked at Texas next week and a possible Cotton Bowl bid. Well, you saw that little scrabble down there. I wanted to make mention that Marvin Durenberger, an umpire, is retiring after this football game. So he's only got three, two, one second left in his career as an umpire. Now the final score. The Texas Aggies knocking off the Texas Crimson 42-24. <laughs> The games of the Southwest Conference continue next Saturday on Raycom Sports as head coach Jack Party and the Houston Cougars move their run-and-shoot offense into Rice Stadium for a battle with crosstown rival Rice University. The Bayou Bucket is up for grabs right here on Raycom Sports.